Good morning and happy Sunday Facebook Live. I'm having my Sunday coffee this morning in my Brave mug. So if you are tuning in live with me right now and you are also having your coffee, maybe you like tea, maybe you have the kombucha. Elizabeth, good morning. Maybe you're just drinking some warm water with lemon and honey, which I love as well. Let me know that you're tuning in here live with me, what it is, happy Sunday, that you're drinking this morning with me. I actually probably need to go give myself a warm up, but I wanted to come live and say hello, happy Sunday. And if you are here with me, hi Holly, say hello, let me know that you're here. Hi Cynthia! Good morning. I don't know if you've ever, I've never seen you on one of my lives, Cynthia. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited that you're all here. Hi, Emily. And uh, hello. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. You guys are tuning in. Let me know. Coffee this morning for Holly. I said, if you guys are tuning in live with me, I'm having coffee in my brave mug. Merida. I love Merida. I love Disney, guys. If you guys don't know this about me, love Disney. Tinkerbell is my home girl. She just, I get down with her and her sassy cuteness and the fact that she can fly and that she can make other people fly. It's just, you know, the bee's knees. So if you're tuning in live with me, let me know that you're here. Let me know what you're drinking and tuning in. What's in your cup this morning? What is in your cup? As we're about to have a brief, I think brief coffee chat this Sunday morning. Also, if you are a newbie, Emily says, yes, you remind me of Tinkerbell. Can I tell you, can I tell you, Emily and everybody listening, first of all, thank you. That basically is like, yes, I received that because I love it so much. Um, that when I was younger, even to this day, my dad, my dad creates nick created nicknames for everybody in my family, like all, all of nieces and nephews. But my nickname from my father was Tinks. Yes, 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 yes. That is my nickname from my dad. Cynthia, nope, always catch replays, excited to catch one live. Me too. Elizabeth says, got the shroom coffee flowing. Yes, is it Four Sigmatic, Elizabeth? I do like their coffee as well. Four Sigmatic coffee is good. I'm not their, I don't, I'm not a mock to tea person because I know they have that, but yeah. So anywho, what the story is about the, the tank though, Emily, let me share this with you, is ironically, I grew up to end up loving Tinkerbell and I grew up to love, you know, Disney and all that stuff. I love magic. I believe in miracles, everything. But the truth of the matter the truth of the matter of why my dad called me Tinks growing up is not because I was little and sprightly, which would just make the story like so cute. Elizabeth Lyons, Maine this morning. Ooh, yum. So it would make it so cute and like magical or whatever. But the reason why my dad called me Tinks is because he was like, when you were little, your diapers were like a bomb. And I would say, oh, Tinky. He was like, they were the worst, like the worst gas, the worst poopy pants, Shannon. So fun fact about me. So fearing change, guys, if you guys are tuning in live with me again, hello, welcome. I'm happy that you're here with me this morning, enjoying some coffee in my Medida mug. Elizabeth, <laughs> I know, Emily, oh my God, I know. It's the truth, the truth of my life. I wish it was so cute and glamorous because look, I do have Tink like everywhere. Tink, let me show you this too. This is my favorite one. Boom, bitch is beautiful. Hi, Shannon, good morning. I so totally love her. She is just, she's my homegirl. Oh my God, I was just chatting in my group. Happy Sunday, yay! So, um, Ashley, welcome. So I wanted to come live this morning as I'm working on some more modules for The Savage Way. Yes, and the group closes this evening. I'm gonna create the private group this night. Well, tonight, welcome all the beautiful women into the program, and tomorrow, lay the hammer down, we get started, light this bitch on fire. But as I'm sitting here and creating the content, um, I am going through a module and I'm working through fear, fear for the program. And one of the things that it got me thinking about is our relationship to fear and how we fear change. And I went live yesterday and was sharing with you all that a part of my programs, a part of the teaching of my programs is I'm always trying to be super mindful of the women in the programs um, because I was a different sort of learner growing up. You know, having the teacher sit in front of the room and kind of just project to me was really not some something that I was always able to ingest, particularly surrounding math what no so um as as a child growing up I would always be the student that would go back to the teacher and be like I don't understand this or inevitably I'm raising my hand and being like I don't I, I don't know what's going on and then I would get really frustrated and I would feel left out and I would feel just stupid right I felt really judge myself I was like fuck everybody else just like takes all this stuff in with ease and I'm like the dumb dumb in the back of the room who feels frustrated and doesn't want to tell anyone because I'm embarrassed 
And as I continue to, you know, go throughout my life, through high school, through college, getting my master's degree, it maintained, right? I, I always maintained that that was just how I learned. And I feared for the longest time, like letting people know that, that I'm not just an audible learner. Like I need to visually like sit down with information and material and allow myself the opportunity to ingest it. So in order to be mindful of the other humans in the world, in particular, the women that are coming into the program, I always, always, always like to create visuals for them to take with them. Not only as they're going through the modules and going through the trainings and going through the coaching so they can sit down and allow themselves to ingest it. And, you know, because this is a growing experience, it's an expansive experience, it can be really emotional, right? So even though we do one-on-one -on -one coaching in the program, you may not feel or you may not have the inclination, you may not feel comfortable speaking up and saying like, hey, I, I had this intuitive hit or this thing that came through me because you may not be ready to speak on it yet. Or you may have not had the upload yet of like, oh yeah, this reminds me of that time. Oh yeah, this reminds me of that thing that I do. And so I like to have an opportunity for people to sit down be mindful of themselves, be vulnerable with themselves, allow themselves to be strong and to integrate the material. And so what I like to do is I like to use analogy and metaphor a lot of the times in my coaching, not only with my clients, but definitely in particular, without a doubt, in all of my training programs. And so one of the things that I feel we have a very difficult time with is fear. We have a very difficult time not only with fear, but also with change. And if you're a visual learner like me, it's very helpful to allow ourselves to visualize what that actually means in the grand landscape of our lives. So if I were to say to you now, fear is a very tiny part of you, what comes up? I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Think about it. What comes up if I say to you, fear is actually a very small part of you? Okay. That's enough time. Um, you can think about this later too, or you can write it down. What can come up is a force of fighting that thought, right? Elizabeth, right? Judgment, Claire says. Yes, judgment. Ooh, ooh, God, that's so juicy. It's so many things that are coming up around that. What is the judgment, Claire? What's the judgment? So, when I say to you, fear is, a, fear is a very small part of you, resistance, Elizabeth said, oh, this is so juicy. Mm -hmm. I love this so much. My coach brain is like, yes, 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 yes. It's all right. You're all right. It's all right, right? So when I say fear is a very small part of you, even to me, I'm like, fuck that. I know very well how I feel when I'm in fear and it does not feel small whatsoever. It feels Super ginormous. It feels big. It feels like it's all of me. Cynthia says, excitement. Yes. I love that too, Cynthia. Ooh, that's all my, my coach brain is like, yes, this is delicious. Mm, mm, mm. I love this so much. Elizabeth, overwhelming. Yes. Oh God, you guys are giving me life right now. Everything that you're saying is right. Right? Everything that we're saying is right. Emily, yes, exactly. Fear can feel so big sometimes. A hundred percent. It feels like it's literally in your eyelashes. It's in like that little pimple on your face. It's in that itch on your butt. It's in your fingernail. It's in the follicles of your hair. It's in every molecule of your, your fiber of your being. And when you think about the thing that's giving you fear, it's in the air that you breathe and takes up space and occupies your lungs. It feels so big. So what if I said to you, Visualize now, fear is a castle. It's a castle. It has stone, it has brick, it has mortar, it has cement, it has tiny crevices, large corridors, windows, doorways, hidden passageways. It has been reinforced over time. It's tall, it's majestic, it can withstand the force of any wind. And when we think about fear, we don't necessarily envision it. We just feel it, right? We don't, we don't say, oh, it's that castle inside of me that exists, you know, on my clavicle. We just say, oh, it's fear and I feel it and that's all I need to know. Ah, run. Genevieve, hello. Hi, Shannon. So if I say to you that fear is a very small part of you and you're envisioning it as a castle, I want to also invite you to think about what castles tend to have. 
When I think of a castle, hi babe, my husband's on. When I think of a castle, I think about, I'm thinking like Game of Thrones castle. I'm thinking about this bitch is tall, this bitch is strong. It, and it only, it only allows those that it wants to. Elizabeth, yes, Elizabeth, mm, 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 on the same energy wavelength. It only allows those that it wants in and it only lets those that it wants out by means of a drawbridge. Each castle has a drawbridge. The, the, the thing about castles that tend to have a drawbridge is they also are typically surrounded by a moat. Heather, happy Sunday. The moat, so fear is the castle and it has all these crevices and all these complexities and it's reinforced and it's supported and it's tall and it's been there for as long as you can remember. The drawbridge is the distance between you, your fear that exists inside you, and on the other side of it is possibility. The moat surrounding the draw, surrounding the castle rather, is everything that we do to protect ourselves from the fear. It's what we call our first line of defense. The drawbridge coupled with the moat is the first line of defense. When we let the drawbridge down, it's saying that, hey, I'm curious what's out there. I'm curious about possibility. I'm curious about change. I'm also curious about letting people, growth, knowledge, information, learning inside. So the castle of fear itself is our comfort zone. Inside the comfort zone is everything that we already know. Everything that we believe to be true. Everything that makes us feel safe. Because we already know it. We've already experienced it. Oh, yes, I got into a, 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 a argument about this that was, you know, of the same flavor, of the same genre, with the same person. Here's all the things that I'm going to do that I know are going to keep me safe. Keep the drawbridge up. But when we allow the drawbridge to go down, we're saying that I'm available. I'm available for possibility. I'm available for transformation. I'm available for change. And that's what exists on the other side of that bridge. So when I say to you that fear is actually a very small part of you, it is. But it's everything inside of you that keeps you safe. Everything inside of you that you already know. Everything inside of you that you believe to be true. But as beings, as human beings, we are just naturally curious. Otherwise, there wouldn't be the moat. Otherwise, there wouldn't be the drawbridge. But think about fear now when you're experiencing it and you're utilizing it to protect you because sometimes it does. Sometimes fear is the difference between you doing that thing and not doing that thing and then being on the other side of it and going, thank God I listened to my fear. Thank God I stayed inside my comfort zone. But think about all the times that you have had the presence of fear and shit still went left. I still had that fear. I still was worried about X, Y, and Z playing out this way. I still was worried about this thing happening. I still still felt the fear of who I was going to be about it. And everything still went to shit. Me staying inside my comfort zone. Me doing the thing that I thought was going to keep me safe. It still went to shit. So fear is just a very tiny part of you. And for all my visual people out there, that any time they encounter change, the first thing they go to on the side of possibility, because when we're thinking about change, the first thing I want you to acknowledge is that I'm thinking about change because I'm engaging the thought of possibility. I'm engaging the thought of growth. I'm engaging the thought of learning. I had that first. Then came the fear. To allow yourself to consider that fear is just a very small part of you. It's just that very small part of you, that very small castle. And if we acknowledge that the survival mechanism, our self-defense mechanisms, are the moat that's surrounding the castle, everything to keep us inside, everything to keep us inside our comfort zone, everything to keep us safe and protected, that the drawbridge to possibility means that we are the land, we are the world in which fear exists. You're the world. 
Fear just takes up real estate. Everything outside the castle is the potentiality of you, is the possibility that you get to create. Change existed on the other side of that fear. Change existed out into the world. Change existed in the land. So when I think about fear and I think about how people process it or avoid it, we think about it as bigger than us. We think of it as our entire being, but we're negating the fact that when we think of possibility, we think of change, we think of newness, that thought came first. The fear came second. Your entire being, your entire body conjured up this idea first. The fear came second. So the drawbridge that comes down, connecting you to potentiality, possibility, is everything outside your comfort zone. Emily says, oh my God, this analogy. Yay, I'm so glad that you liked it. When I think about coaching and I think about how we communicate with each other, we don't all communicate the same. We have to allow ourselves to visualize. Hi, Rachel. We have to allow ourselves to ingest it in our way. And that is often what happens when we get into coaching relationships, when we get into any relationship. We're looking at it through the lens of our own eyes thinking, if you don't explain it to me in the exact way that I need to receive it, then it's for shit. If you don't explain it to me in the exact way that I need to receive it, then it's not good. If you don't explain it to me the exact way that I need to receive it, then there's something wrong with me. It's not for shit. It is good. And there's nothing wrong with you. I talked about this yesterday in the live that I did uh, yesterday afternoon. It's There's a difference between being willing and unwilling. If you are unwilling to step outside your comfort zone, which is where fear lives, then you're unwilling. There ain't nothing wrong with you. There ain't nothing wrong with people that are taking that on. There ain't nothing wrong with people that are inviting people to take that on. You're just unwilling. It's okay. Not everybody's green light is on. But there is a lens through which we have the opportunity to receive all information. Claire, I'm so glad you love this. And that lens is allowing ourselves to reframe how we ingest and receive information. So for instance, when I'm coaching with my coach or I'm investing in any coach that I'm working with or any coaching program and they're going on some tangent about something that I'm like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I allow myself to pause and I allow myself to say, how can I think of this in a way that relates to me? Let me give you a for instance. I was in a coaching program recently and the coach in charge was talking about womb energy and our ability to procreate and have children as our most valuable, energetic, and powerful resource as women. I'm, I'm abbreviating, of course. I became so fucking challenged by this. I can't have kids. I was like, fuck this information. This is dumb. I'm out. I got so mad. I was like, boom, I turned off. I was pissed. I was so fucking mad. I was like, how dare they? How dare they completely exclude a whole pop population of people that are real and exist? I know because I'm one of them. It took me like two weeks. Two weeks to work through this shit. Why? Because I was in my comfort zone. Why? Because I had I had revisited old fears that I had allowed to be true for me too. I convinced myself that if I couldn't have kids, then I wasn't a woman. I have convinced myself that if I couldn't have kids, I was no value to society. I convinced myself that if I couldn't have kids, I had no legacy on this planet. And that communication, the way that they were communicating for them and for the entirety of the program challenged me. And allowed me with myself, they didn't do it, I did it. I put myself right back inside my castle with my fear. I closed up my drawbridge and was like, fuck you, fuck your coaching, fuck everybody in this program, and fuck all the people that can have kids. I'm fucked. I'm so mad right now. I No information will ingest. None. I'm so pissed. I went back inside my castle, picked out my drawbridge, made sure that my moat was back intact, and was like, fuck everyone, I'm out. Think about how many times you do that. 
Think about how often you, you ingest something and you take it on and you make it negative about you. And so when you feel that negative energy, fear fills up your entire body and you're saying to yourself, I'm not available to ingest this in the way that works for me. I'm not even allowing myself to consider it because I'm fearing the change that hasn't actually occurred. I'm fearing the potentiality of me receiving this information in a way that works for me. Elizabeth did this very thing last night. Oh my God, so powerful. Emily, I'm so happy. Yay, this makes me so happy. I should do Sunday coffee chats all the time. And so while I was in there like this, I was like, fuck it. So mad, hate everyone. Mm. I was like, oh my, okay, 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 okay. Check in with myself, right? So I do. What's happening? What is the possibility that's occurring here? Where's the potentiality for change? Heather, I'm done fearing. Yay! Where am I with fear? And I was like, well, I'm in fear that this is actually true. I'm in fear that I'm not allowing myself to rediscover who I am at every single level, realizing that this information will continue to come up. I'm fearing that I'm not allowing myself to have compassion for who I am walking with this information. So walked back over to the drawbridge and was like, okay, who am I going to be about this? What is the possibility for me with this information? What is, what is the potentiality for me on the other side of this? Who am I outside of my comfort zone, which is where possibility and change exists? What can I learn and grow and receive from this? And what I learned was I have the power. Whether I can have kids or not, the information that was being delivered to me was you have the power. Your energy is your power. Whether you can procreate biologically or not, you still have the power as a woman to decide how this goes for you. Simply because you are a woman with power. I allowed myself to reframe it, redirect it, ingest it, receive it, let the drawbridge down and said, I'm walking on. And when I, when I become challenged by change and by possibility and by continuing to allow myself to take responsibility and accountability for who I'm going to be with my courage and my fear in my life, that's when things expand. That's when I expand. That's when I get just implicit clarity about what I am and I am not available for. Emily, thank you. So I wanted to come live today to reframe not only how you receive information, but how you're allowing yourself to receive who you are with fear. Allowing yourself to see that fear is just such a tiny part of you. In my visual that I will walk through in the savage way with the women in this program is that it is a castle. It can withstand any storm. It has been reinforced by years of stories and learned behaviors, but it is only reinforced by years and stories of learned behaviors to keep us protected by the things that we already know. I need to go back and watch from the beginning. Yay! Rachel, good morning. Lydia, good morning. Bernina, hello. And those things that we already know are all are in the past. Potentiality and possibility and courage all exist in the present in service of who you're going to be in the future. Change and walking with fear it occurs in the present. It starts in the now. Like I said, yeah, it took two weeks to be like, I don't care. I'll be fucking mad forever. I'll never talk to her again. I'll never invest in one of her coaching programs again. She's not even. Da, 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 da. And it's just wild. It's just like all the static in your brain. It took me four years to work through infertility and I work through it every single day. So when we walk with fear, allow yourself to, to notice your rebound time. What you're reducing as far as how your willingness to acknowledge who you're being about how you ingest information, how you allow yourself to visualize fear. Is it bigger than you? I know the emotion is strong. 
I know it feels like it's palpable. I know it feels like it's in your soul and every microorganism of your body, but it really is such a small part of you. Because on the other side of that, you're the land. If fear is a castle in the world, you're the world. You get to make the decisions. You get to decide how the change is going to impact you. You get to decide if you are willing to walk with fear outside of your comfort zone in service of the possibility of the life that you get to be with change, reclamation of who you are, and your self-discovery. So for all of my visual learners, I wanted to come live today and share some visualization that I do with myself. This will also be happening inside the Savage Way. I do this in all of my coach programs as well, including giving the materials. I also create analogies and metaphors and visualizations for people to walk through and create and generate with themselves. Things that make sense to them. Things that allow them to explore how they're living inside their comfort zone and what is keeping them from traipsing into the land of possibility. So if you have any questions about the program, please post them below. Direct message me for the enrollment application. As I said, you have a little under 24 hours to enroll. The program is going to open tonight in the private community at 7 p.m. Elizabeth, yay, I'm so glad you loved it. We will explore this more inside the Savage Way. Um, but the program opens tonight at 7 p.m. And um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, enrollment ends at midnight. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I cannot wait to get started. I cannot wait to continue these conversations with you, being mindful of each other, being mindful of how we ingest information, being mindful of our willingness or not to grow and change and expand and realizing that fear is just a tiny part of you. You don't need to shame it. You don't need to blame it. You just need to say, I see you. You see me. Let's keep going. I love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Have a fantastic week. Be good to yourself for fuck's sake. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.